In this lesson, we'll look at the Android Software Development Kit, or SDK, and you'll learn how to use the SDK Manager. Also, if you haven't loaded the Android Developer Tools Bundle, which includes the SDK, you'll learn how to download the SDK to your computer. The Android SDK is made up of modular software packages that you can download to your computer together or separately using the Android SDK Manager. This software supports the development and debugging of your Android apps. Whether you install the Android Developer Tools Bundle, which includes Eclipse and the SDK, or installed Eclipse separately, please pause the course now and start Eclipse. When you come back to the course, please watch everything that follows from this point. If you didn't install the ADT Bundle, I'll show you how to install the SDK now. First, click on this link to take you to the Get the Android SDK webpage. This is the same page we visited to download the ADT bundle by clicking on this link here. But this time, to download the SDK separately, if you have an existing IDE, click on Use an Existing IDE. Click on Download the SDK Tools for Windows. And the Download button. To download for other platforms, click here. Then to download the SDK, choose your operating system and click here. Notice there are also options for downloading the ADT bundle to other platforms here. Now let's take a closer look at what's included in the SDK. We'll click on the Exploring the SDK link here. And this web page provides an overview of what's included in the SDK. And as you can see, you find it in the Tools section under Download. Before we look at the details of the SDK, let me first make a quick point about using the Android developer's website. That is that it's very dynamic. For example, look at the navigation bar here at the top. You notice anything different from previous views we've had of the website? Google has added a section on Google services, which we'll explore in a later lesson. During this course, I'll be directing you to various locations on the developer's website. Over time, the layout of the site will probably shift, and dealing with this is part of becoming an Android developer. Google has lots of smart developers that are constantly adding and changing Android software and the Android website, all focused on improving it, of course. It does mean, however, getting used to change. When it comes to finding things on the Android website, if the navigation changes or you have trouble finding something, you can always use the search capability here. Knowing how to find information on the developer's website will be extremely important as you develop your apps. You'll need to search for solutions to your coding challenges, and the developer's website will be an important development tool. Now back to exploring the SDK. Let's start with an important distinction. Some of the elements of the SDK apply to all Android versions, and some are version-specific, such as Honeycomb version 3 versus Ice Cream Sandwich version 4. For example, the SDK tools are used for debugging and testing across all the versions of Android, and they are thus platform independent. SDK platform tools are also used for developing and debugging, but they're platform dependent. Which tools are platform independent and which are platform dependent will become evident when we use the SDK manager to download them later in this lesson. For now, we just want to get a feel for what's included. The documentation describes the Android platform APIs. The SDK platform provides the base code for each version of Android, and in your app, you'll specify which platform you're using as your build target. The system images, such as ARM or Intel Atom x86, are used by the emulator to run your app on your computer. The x86 image should make your emulator run faster than the ARM image if your computer runs on Intel processors. Sources for the Android SDK include a copy of the Android platform source code for use during debugging. Samples for the SDK are platform-dependent sample applications demonstrating many Android features. Google APIs provide support for application programming interfaces such as Google Maps. Google APIs are used by web apps as well as Android mobile apps. Android Support provides a library for support of later version features such as fragments on earlier Android versions. For example, fragments can be used all the way back to Android 1.6 using this library. 
Google Play Billing provides libraries and samples that let you integrate Google Play Billing services into your apps. Google Play Licensing provides libraries and samples that let you perform license verification for your app when distributing it with Google Play. Now let's look at how you open the SDK from your Eclipse environment. If you haven't opened Eclipse, do it now. Once in Eclipse, open the Java Perspective by clicking on the Java Perspective tab. If you haven't opened that perspective, click on Window, Open Perspective, and then Java, and OK. In this perspective, on the Tools bar, you should see an icon for the SDK Manager. It's the icon with the little Android robot and the downward arrow. Click on that button to open the SDK Manager. From here, you'll download the elements you need to develop on the platforms you choose to use. Now let's see how that works. To download files, click on the selected component or component group, and then click Install. For example, I need to update Google Play Services. So if I click on Google Play Services, I'll see the Install button appear here. If I click that, that component will install. Let's give that a try now so you can see how it works. Click Accept and Install, and there you go. Now, as you might have noticed, I've installed all the components. This is a convenience so that I have everything loaded on my computer and I can test and develop on any version of Android. If you want to make sure you have everything you need, you can do as I've done and check everything for download. If you do this, it could take a while to complete the downloads depending on the speed of your internet link. If you don't want to download everything, I suggest that for now you download Tools, Android 4.1.2. It includes the Intel x86 system image, which will make our emulators run more quickly. And let's pick a lower version, 2.3.3. It also includes the x86 system image. And you'd also want to include the extras. Now, because I already have these installed, I don't see the Install Packages button appear. But you should, and you'll click on that and install the packages you've selected. So that's an overview of the SDK. As you can see, it has lots of piece parts. But remember, the Eclipse IDE will give you an integrated view that helps greatly in staying organized and using all the tools. That's the end of this lesson. Go ahead and load your SDK components before going on to the next lesson.